story, this hour, the impeachment battle, the House preparing for tomorrow's vote against President Trump a week after approving two articles of impeachment. This is Democratic Congresswoman Elisa Slotkin during a heated town hall in her Michigan district yesterday announced her support for impeachment. Watch what happened to her. How can you overturn the will of 63 million voters in 2016? And why don't you trust voters to make a decision for themselves in less than a year? I was not supportive of impeachment for many, many months because I thought the election in 2020 should take care of it. But then the facts came out that the president was reaching out and seeking to influence that very election that I was counting on to have a democratic process in. Slotkin won a seat in a district that President Trump won in 2016, and we've been talking about these 31 Democrats that are up for re-election uh, in 2020 in the same districts that President Trump won, and a vote for impeachment could have a major sway on those people's re-elections. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman, House Armed Services and Judiciary Committee member Matt Gates. Congressman, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And to my friend Elise Slotkin for the upcoming year, I would say rent, don't buy in Washington, D.C. with that attitude, talking down to voters. I think that there'll probably be a change in a lot of those Trump-leaning districts. You know, it's interesting because hearing her talk about, look, I was against impeachment for a lot of, a, a lot of time and then I, I, I changed my mind. I mean, why did she change her mind? What specifically happened to change her mind? There wasn't any new evidence that came out. Maybe she just got the call from Nancy Pelosi to say, hey, Elise Slotkin, shut down. When you see members of Congress suddenly change their mind when the leadership is whipping votes, you can tell that pressure is being exerted. I think the best evidence is the admission from Nancy Pelosi that she's been planning this for two years. You also saw Jerry Nadler, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, when he sought that position from his fellow colleagues, he literally ran on the fact that he would be the best person to execute on an impeachment strategy. I predicted in January that the impeachment would be an inevitability, not because the evidence against the president was strong, but because the will among Democrats to avoid the debate on the economy, on trade, on immigration would lead them to impeachment as their sole electoral strategy going into 2020. You got to give Jeff Van Drew a lot of credit. Democrat from New Jersey, uh, couldn't take it anymore, decided to actually <laughs> switch parties and, uh, you know, change his party affiliation from Democrat to Republican. He told me weeks really ago he was a no on impeachment. I'm sure he got slammed for it. He did. The sad part about this is that Democrats have failed to meet the standard that they set for themselves. You'll recall back when they voted for the impeachment inquiry and they lost two of their fellow Democrats, they said it would be the hearings, the witnesses, that would animate this newfound bipartisan support to impeach the president. That didn't happen because the evidence wasn't there. Yeah. And so now you've got impeachment losing steam in the polls and you've even got the Democratic caucus losing members as they are swimming away from the sinking ship that is the Nancy Pelosi strategy. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it's really sad to see these Democrats and leaders uh, in the Democrat Party uh, refusing to focus on the real wrongdoing, and that is what took place in, in yes. 2016 with that cabal of people at the top of the FBI and the CIA. The IG report says it all. Former FBI Director James Comey said he was wrong about the Bureau's use of FISA applications in the Russia investigation this weekend. Of course, his comments came uh, after last week week's damning IG report. Let me get your take on that. I want to point your attention to an op-ed in the journal this morning from James Freeman, one of our friends here on the program, a regular here on this uh, uh, program, says Obama's FBI in the press and uh, how sad it is that uh, the, the establishment media refuses to actually admit the facts. Inspector General Michael Horowitz will be back on Capitol Hill tomorrow. Congressman, tell me your reaction to the IG report and what happens now? Well, the two things happened that are pretty troubling. Where there was evidence that proved that President Trump's campaign uh, members were innocent, the FBI hid it. And where the evidence was insufficient, they either took it from lying foreigners or they altered it and created it altogether. So either they just did this because President Trump's campaign was the target, which to me would prove bias, or they do this as a matter of course in more cases than just this one. And if that's true, God help us. I think we need a more thorough review to see how frequently people at the FBI were willing to hide evidence and doctor evidence to meet their investigative goals. Not only that, but the FBI continues to tell us that the counterintelligence investigation started in July of 2016 when Congressman, we know that's just not true. We know that there were informants running at people like Sam Clovis, Carter Page, uh, George Papadopoulos as, as early as March and May of 2016. Even in the IG report, Kim Strassel of the 
Journal points out something really important that in the IG report it said Christopher Steele was hired by Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS in May of 16 to look for collusion between Trump and Russia. Absolutely right. And I think that's one reason when I asked that very direct question to Rod Rosenstein about the start of this investigation, he simply wouldn't answer it under oath because he didn't want to perjure himself. And he also didn't want to share the admission that this was an effort to destabilize and delegitimize Donald Trump well before July. And I think it was the insurance policy. We know what this is. We've read the text messages. Yeah. They wanted an insurance policy. And then once he was elected, they were willing to put their thumb on the scale and cheat to try to make it look like he had done something that he never did. And now here we are with the country next door and a vote tomorrow on Ukraine, of all things, when the president had no conditionality and when he delivered aid that President Obama did not. It is crazy to me that we are going to vote on impeachment with these facts. It's, it's quite extraordinary. I wonder when this stops. I mean, this just has not stopped since the president took office. And, 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 you know, John Ratcliffe, your colleague, Congressman Ratcliffe from Texas, said to me on Sunday on Sunday Morning Futures, crimes have been committed, crimes against Carter page and also against a sitting president. Can you believe that the first FISA application and warrant was in October of 16 and it went all the way until the following October of 17, well into the president's term. So they were actually investigating the president while he was in office in 2017. And they were investigating him when they knew that the entire predicate was bogus, when they knew it was That's full right. of lies delivered by a liar. Yeah. And so I think that'll ultimately be the legacy that these Democrats face. Yeah, I'm proud of this program. We've been on it since the beginning and told viewers really uh, what was the truth. And we seek the truth. Rudy Giuliani speaking out again, though, Congressman. What do you think about this? The president's personal attorney says that he played a key role in forcing former Ukraine ambassador uh, Marie Yovanovitch out of her post. Watch this. I, I forced her out because she's corrupt. I came back uh, with a document that will show unequivocally that she committed perjury when she said that she turned down the visa for uh, Mr. Shokin because of corruption. The fact is, on the record, in the State Department's own records, the reason given is because he had had an operation and hadn't recovered yet. The operation, of course, was two years before. It's documentary evidence that she committed perjury. Uh, you know, Rudy Giuliani has the facts, but is this helping or hurting the president? I don't think it matters at all, and I don't particularly care, and I don't think most of the American people do either. I think what the American people care about is that the president never had any conditionality on yep. aid. Whether or not there are elements of our government that were at war with other elements of our government, that, that natural tension can occur in the diplomatic corps. I don't find it highly relevant to the analysis. Yeah. There was no conditionality. The aid was delivered. This impeachment is the consequence of the failed Russia hoax and the Democrats' desire to have some counter-programming to their lack of candor in dealing with uh, the president's activities uh, in relationship to Russia. Yeah, I mean, it may very well be that they're just continuing to try to muddy up the water so that people don't focus on the real wrongdoing at the, in the IG report. And what's going to happen with John Durham's criminal investigation? Will we see accountability? Do you think people will be prosecuted, Congressman? I do. And the reason is that the Durham investigation did not start as a criminal investigation. It was an administrative review. That's true. Then there was some catalyzing event that turned it into a criminal investigation. That seems to prove to me that there is some criminal intent, some desire to uh, engage in criminal behavior. And I think that you saw Durham and Barr both react very negatively to the inspector general saying, well, I've seen all the evidence. I know there was wrongdoing. Rules were violated. But, gee, it might not be a crime. Yeah. I think the more complete picture picture will come from Durham and Barr. All right, real quick before you go, Congressman, uh, lay out what's going to happen this, uh, this next couple of weeks. The impeachment vote is tomorrow. Let's assume, hypothetically, that the House impeaches President Trump, that she has enough votes to do it. Then it moves to the Senate. How does that play out? I agree with Lindsey Graham. We need to dismiss this and get on with all of our collective lives as soon as possible. But I think subsequent to that dismissal, it is entirely appropriate for the Judiciary Committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee, to call witnesses, bring them in, and better understand uh, whether or not there was corruption that was r impacting our government. And if you had the Vice President of the United States having his son out moonlighting for cash for a foreign corporation, we should probably know more about that so that we can legislate it ar around it so it never happens again.
again. All these Democrats running for President Maria, I haven't heard of one of them defend this process where the family members of your administration go work for foreign companies and sell access to our government's decision-making process. Yeah, because it wasn't just Ukraine, right? I mean, Hunter Biden took a trip with then-Vice President uh, mm. Joe Biden on Air Force Two when he visited China on official business. Mm. Yeah, and then you saw the Chinese talking about how they were giving all these expensive gifts to Hunter Biden, diamonds, scotch, other wow. things. I don't think that was a consequence of uh, his excellent advice or counsel. I think it's because they were trying to buy favor with U.S. politicians, and they believe that buying off family members would be an effective way to do that. Let's all agree, Republican or Democrat, that makes our country look bad, and we should stop. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know about the scotch and the diamonds. I know that he got read a the New Yorker profile. Uh, wow, that's yeah, incredible. Yeah, read, read, read the New Yorker profile on Hunter Biden. Biden, it's quite Con a read. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much. <laughs>